Welcome back to my Red Hat Process Automation Managers video series. Last time I showed you what is achievable using web service tasks exception to instantiate a centralized business process to handle error. Today I'm going to show you how this is implemented. As I showed you last time, the first thing you need to do is to add another parameter in the data assignments. The parameter is called handle response error and is of type boolean. You should set it to true. Now so let's look at the error handling process. And this is the process ID. You see one dot error dash handling. Now we need to go back to the settings, go to deployments, work item handlers, web service. If you compare this with the previous one, I have added two additional parameters. The last one, the last setting we have is just cast holder. Now I've added also the uh, business process deployment ID you see one dot error dash handling and also the strategy I'm going to use. As I mentioned in my previous video, there are several different uh, strategies that you can use. Retry is the one that I selected because I want the business, I want the error handling business process when it terminates to actually retry the, the, the surface that has failed. There are other strategies, either complete that is competing that service call or a bot or a bot the service call. Also, I want to show you that uh, you also need to configure a stateful session as a default in the key basis and the key session just call it stateful, stateful, right? This is required for the business rules in the error handling uh, business process. Now, let me get back to the uh, business process diagram. Now let us look at the process variables defined in this business process. You can see that I've defined deployment ID, process instance ID, work item ID, and so on and so forth. You should have this defined. These are required by PAM in handling errors. The only one that uh, I added are the error event and the error count, which are used for the business rules. But before we examine those, let's have a look at the business rule, what they are. DLL, error handling rules. There are two rules in there. The first one is to, like uh, when it's the first time you encounter an error for that particular surface, it will create the first error counter. And then for subsequent errors, it will update that particular counter, increment it by one. And that's it. You can see that it's actually using two extra data models, error events and error counters. Let's have a look at what they are. Error event. So all it does is contain the error message, instant or process instance ID, no instance ID and timestamp, and also error counter. Similar to the previous one, but with uh, the error count contained in here as well. Let's get back to the error handling business process. So how does the error event enter into the uh, business rule, into the business process? So it's actually done over here. If you look at the implementation here, the on entry action, I've actually initialized the event with all the relevant information and put it into the k context variable, and set up it, and set up that particular 
variable call event call ever event in using k context and on exit is going to get that ever count and display it in the console and that's it that is how it's done and then the next thing it comes to is this decision under normal situation it will just go and wait for uh, five seconds and then terminate on termination I have configured it to retry that particular uh, failed West call. So in here, the timer setting is 10 seconds. So how do I determine whether it's a normal retry or it has exceeded the number of week retries? So here, all I'm doing is just examine that uh, uh, process variable error count, whether it's a smaller or equal to three. If it is, then it go through this path. Otherwise, it go to this particular uh, retry exceeded path. So if you look at the menu intervention, let's look at the data inputs that I provided. So it's going to display the de deployment ID, process instance ID, work item ID, error message, and instance ID, and also uh, I also specify the output, which is uh, content data. Basically, it is the uh, request that you included in your original uh, web service call. It's called content data. Well, if uh, I get back to this thing here, you will see where it's coming from. This is the content data, right? In here, I'm just uh, passing it a string. There's a name of the person. And that's it. And then what you can do is just uh, deploy it and go through the interaction that I show you uh, in the previous video. That's it for error handling. By the way, I have put up this uh, this project on GitHub. So you can look at the uh, link just below this uh, video and you will find the source code and you are welcome to download it, play around with it, and give me some feedback if uh, you want to. Thank you. Until the next time, stay healthy.